Getting to be family now, this is deep. Shelly and I really getting to be your family. And we enjoy that. We like to come here and be a family to each and every one of you. If you have your Bible there, let us take our Bible and go into the book of Isaiah. In the book of Isaiah, chapter number six, very familiar chapter in the Word of God and a beautiful, beautiful chapter here in the Word of God. But before, while you're going to Isaiah chapter number six, two weeks ago, I was here and I asked to pray for my friend who is a pastor there in Georgia, Darrell, and he um, fell. I told him he fell and hit his head. This guy just had a, a kidney transplant just a few months ago. His daughter gave him a kidney and it was a perfect match. The operation was successful. He was excited. He was gonna be in the pulpit um, with all that energy and strength. And then in a few months, he fell in his old bathroom and fractured here, his neck and all that kind of stuff. But um, I got a call this morning from his son-in-law and his son-in-law told me he's fighting for his life. He's just on this machine. They don't know if he, what's gonna happen but it doesn't, look, it doesn't look good, it's like he lost it. But when he was talking to me on the phone, I was thinking when I met him, I met this pastor, he's a pastor of Grace Baptist Church there, and I, I met him, I can't remember how many years ago, and the bond that God has given between us the first time we met. And I happened to spend a weekend with him there, and what I observed is that his love for his children, his love for his ministry was, was very encouraging to me. And now when his son-in-law was talking to me, what an influence this man has had on his family, his, his immediate family and his grandchildren. As a matter of fact, when I go and preach, he will come and sit like where Pastor, Pastor Tuning is sitting and his grandchildren will come in, and in every service I watch, they will leave their mother and father, and they're gone by their grandpa, grandpa, and they sit next to him, you know. They love this guy. This guy is love in, in that part of the world. Now, you have to understand, here is a man who's fighting for his life. I do not know, they do not know if he's going to make it, but he was a true witness to his family. And we have heard a lot of, a lot of, um, sicknesses going on in our church all over the world and you and i know whether you're young or old death is a reality it happens and it will happen whether you like it or not death will come your way and as i think about this preacher fighting for his life i think about what kind of witnesses do we left behind and um, here is the son not talking but what a witness this guy was to to him and all the children and so forth. And I was excited when I heard that. And I observed some of that when I, when I was dear. And this guy is, is, I think he's a millionaire in materialistic thing. He's not, a, he's very, very rich. And oftentimes he would say, Mohammed, you come and take this church, man. I, I, this is the church for you. I'm gonna back out. I just wanna sit and listen to you preach. And you will have this package of X, Y, and Z. <laughs> and I will laugh. I said, no, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm not interested in that. I'm, I'm, I'm going back to, um, to my country. But um, it's very important for us because I've, I've been a, done a lot of funeral like Pastor has done. And you have been to a lot of funeral. And many times at the end of our life and when we lie in that casket, um, even our immediate family is not there or they don't want to be there. Sometimes our own son, I've been in a situation where the own children don't, they don't want anything to do with this guy. And I'm thinking as a dad, as I'm a, I'm a father, I'm a husband, I have grandchildren. I don't want that. I want my grandchildren to, to understand that I love them. And when I lie in that casket, I may leave a witness behind 
that uh, uh, it'll be a testimony and a blessing to friends and family and the churches that I've been in, and especially to my immediate family. So to be a witness is very, very important. I've heard stories, your heart stories, of preachers saying, if I had to do it again, I would do it differently. I've read many times that I've heard it from the words of many preachers, many missionaries, and, and you name it. Men has been in the ministry for many years who testified, if I had to do it again, I would do it differently because I have neglected my family. I have done things to them that I should not have done. Uh, and, and sometimes we go overboard. So we have to have that spiritual balance of loving our children and our family and our grandchildren and our immediate people that are around us. I, I want to talk about a privilege that we have, uh, a message that we have, and a partner that God has given to you and I that are born again. And I want to talk about this word, being a witnesses. Now here in Isaiah chapter number six, if you have your Bible there, we read in verse number one to verse number eight. The Bible tells us there, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah said, I, I saw also the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Now, you could take each one of these verses and preach a message so beautifully put and so powerfully written through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. But look at what he said in verse number two. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God of hosts. It's sorry, is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory, oh beloved, what a, what a joy it is to serve a God that is holy, holy, holy. And then he said, the Bible said in verse number four, I love verse number four, by the way, the post of the door moved at the voice of him that cried, and the house was filled with smoke, because Isaiah had his vision of God being holy, and the vision of a God that is almighty and he saw the glory and the holiness of God then he said then said I in verse number five woe is me for I am undone because I'm a man of unclean lips I'm not worthy for this and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for my eyes have for my eyes have seen the king the Lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a life coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thy iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, you know, you see the Trinity here in verse 8. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of thy word. Lord, we know that without your spirit among us, this message would be nothing. We are nothing without thee, God. And so, Lord, we pray that thy Holy Spirit dwell to thee among us, Lord. Have our ears open, a heart prepared so that thy message can be a blessing to each and every one of us, that we may think upon thy word and ponder upon thy word, and that thy word may find place in our heart and bear fruit. We remember to give you all the praises and thanks and the glory, for we act in Christ and for his sake. And all of God's children join me in saying, Amen. Now here we have the situation that you have heard so many messages about. Isaiah, the vision of a holy God, and then... I love what happened when his iniquity was, was purged and his sins was purged in verse number seven. Then Isaiah heard the voice of the Lord and, and he heard this, 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 this question or this message was sent that the, God is saying, whom shall I send and who will go for us? He had a choice to be quiet 
He had a choice to not get involved. But Isaiah said, he said this, he said, here am I, here am I, personal, here am I, Lord, send me, use me. He made that decision, that moment and that time with God and himself. Isaiah was used by God in, in such a mighty way and, and these words is used so much all over the world among Christians in pulpit, in hymns and so forth. Hear my Lord, send me. Hear my Lord, send me. I'm willing to go Lord, send me. Use me, O oh God. And that's what, he, that's what he said. Simple words that, that changed his life. These were just some, some simple words. No fancy words was used here. He said, as, what, what would he say? He said, hear my Lord, send me. One, two, three, four, five. Five simple words that Isaiah said. Nothing fancy. Hear my Lord, send me. When you, when you study the book of Isaiah, Isaiah was used by God unlike any other prophet. Isaiah was used to write 66 chapters, not 67 or not 65. He wrote 66 chapters. That's very significant. When you combine the Old Testament with the New Testament, you have 66 books. <laughs> Many Bible scholars would say, if, 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 if only we had the book of Isaiah, we could have preached the book of Isaiah until the Lord returned. Because Isaiah was used by God not only to write 66 chapters and not 60 or 65, but Isaiah was used by God in such a mighty... And here, simple words he said. He never knew what he was going to get himself into. He just said, hear my Lord, send me. And then the God of heaven take control of that. And the God of heaven was going to use this man in such a mighty, mighty way that he, did, he never thought that would ever happen. And that's a God we serve. That God could take somebody that say those simple words after getting saved. A person with hardly any education or what, whatever circumstances of life that person may come before and get saved. How God can use that person. And we have seen that over our lifetime, people that were drunk, people that were alcoholic, people that were drug addict, and all kind of people has entered into the ministry. And God has used them so mightily that if you don't know their background, you would think, wow, he's like an angel or she's an angel. But no, 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 no. They had a past. But if you don't know the past, because when you hear them preach and teach and sing, you say, wow. What an angelic voice and so forth. So here we have Isaiah. The man who God used, he writes explicitly about the birth of Jesus Christ. I mean, no other book in the Bible you read that a virgin shall conceive and the virgin shall bring forth a son. No other book. And Isaiah said, and his name shall be called, and you know that, wonderful counselor, mighty God everlasting. This is the guy who said, and his name shall be called Emmanuel. He wrote so much about the birth, the virgin birth. Can you go back in time and think about Isaiah writing that? How many people probably laugh at him, spit at him, make fun of him? What are you talking about, Isaiah? A virgin that's beyond medical science? A virgin cannot conceive. But Isaiah penned that. Hundreds of years before it took place, he never saw it. But you see how God used this man through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Hundred, over 700 years before it took place, he wrote about the virgin being conceived and bring forth a son. That's so powerful. Before Jesus Christ was crucified on Calvary cross over 2,000 years ago, Isaiah wrote about it. In Isaiah 53, remember he said, he's despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our face. He said, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. All that came from Isaiah. And the Lord laid on him. And, and, and he was led as a lamb to be slaughtered. All of that came from one chapter of Isaiah chapter number 53. And when you read Isaiah chapter number 1. This guy knocked every religion out of the park. 
When you study that, that one chapter, Isaiah took all these religious group and he buried them six feet under the ground. He said the new moon is nothing. The calling of secret assemblies is nothing. All the lodge and all the secret assemblies is nothing. He said the sacrifice of rams and goats and bull is nothing. It's nothing. All of that, this guy went from, from one to another to another to another to another. And then he tells us it is the blood of Jesus Christ. That is the, 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 the and all he said, here my Lord, send me. That's all he said. Here my Lord, send me. This is the man that wrote about not only the dead, the resurrection. He wrote and so poetically. Let me say that so poetically, so beautiful, so beautiful because I love the book of Isaiah. I spend time stuck, but his writing is, is, is different than many of the other prophets writing. It is so beautifully and poetically written that it, 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 you want to read it over and over again. He, he, this is the man that God used and he write about that, that he write about this one true God. I love that from my background. And my country background, Suriname is, there are gods and goddesses everywhere, man. Everywhere. You come to Suriname, you see the Muslim mosque. Then you go down the same street or two streets after, the big Hindu temple. You go down over there, the cathedral. Then you go over the other side, the Mormons, the JW. Religion is everywhere. You drive down. When you, when you, if you come to Suriname, you land with the airplane there. Bam. You land. You get your luggage and you, you come out. The taxis bring you five or eight minutes away from the airport whether you come in the night or whether you come in the day you have large you should see gigantic size idols waiting for you you want to stop your taxi in the night and go and bow down to it that's okay that's why they have them there they have lights on them so i have seen when shell and i land people stop there and they bow down i've seen people Stop the taxi and bow down to those gods and goddesses everywhere in that country. So if you're traveling in the day, they are there. If you're traveling at night, they are there. Every almost every bridge you go over in Suriname, over a small river or a small stream, you go over and there's an entire. You should see idols, idols and idols everywhere you go. Idols, idols. When we have mission trip, I, I mean, I, I had a missionary from from uh, a pastor from Fort Knight. He said. You know, we, I read it in the Bible. I never thought I would see it with my own eyes. I never thought I would see it. I said, you want to go into one of the Hindu temples? Let me ask the priest. I asked the priest and the priest let him go in. He was shocked at what he saw. Crocodiles and snakes. And the stage filled with evil carving of man, evil thoughts and imagination. And that's what people will worship. That's what, that, is, that is where I grew up. That's where Shell and I grew up. In that kind of environment. So when I read the book of Isaiah, it means a lot to me. Because he, he wrote about the one true God. He wrote about the one God. The one God. It is so beautiful that I, I want you to go with Isaiah 53. You're, you're in the book of Isaiah there. So let's go to Isaiah, Isaiah sorry, 43. Isaiah 43. And we read in verse number 10. Now you could, this is a beautiful chapter for you to read. We don't have the time for me to read all the verses. So I chose this verse here. Look at verse number 10 in Isaiah chapter number 43. He said, Isaiah said, Ye are my witnesses. When I saw that, Pierre, I, I jumped for joy. That I, I, with all my problems and all my shortcomings and all my errors I, I can be a witnesses I can be a witness to the one true and powerful God that's awesome and that is what he wants for you and you and you and you that's what God wants us to be simple a light in a world of darkness that we are the children of light let your light so shine before men we are the salt of the earth to our children, our grandchildren, in our home, to our neighbors. Not when we come to church, we play holy, 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 holy in, in, in the, among the pews and the people here. Yes, brother. Yes, sister. Yeah, I love you, sister. I love you, brother. And then when we go back home, it's a, our kids can't see anything in us. 
You can't say anything. They don't, they don't even want to come to church. That's not right. So here he's saying this. He said, I want you to be a witnesses. He said, you're my witnesses, saith the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen. Wow. That you may know and believe me and understand that I am he. Before me, there was no God form. BBC, you know. I, I don't like to watch BBC. Some of these plays drive me bananas, if I may say it. With, it, with, with what they will say on the news. They really do. The guy was saying last night, they find a little, things look like a butterfly, and, and, and it looks like a, it looks like an iguana too, like an iguana. I mean, we have so much iguana in our country. They're all over. Now they found an iguana. Something looked like iguana. And they said this is 500 billion years ago. You've got to be kidding me. Where you get those figures from? You know? And people believe that? People believe that? The atheist group, they were so excited two years ago. They were so excited. They said, finally, we found it. We found how man was formed. So I watch, I want to see what they found. They found a little, a little thing like this that's so ugly. I've never seen an ugly little thing like this. And they say, well, after so many years, this little ugly, ugly thing became something else. And after so many years, it became, and bam, here am I. We have human beings. You've got to be kidding me. How stupid can people be to believe that? How people? Then we have the Scientology group right here in Tampa. The, 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 this green guy came from, from the space and interact with a human. You, when I, I never knew about Scientology until I came to this country. And so I studied this thing. This thing is so stupid. You know? So I would say, Shelly, listen, I don't believe it. I don't watch it. That is an insult to my, to my intelligence. Simple as that. It's an insult to my intelligence. Pray God for the Bible. The Bible said, this is what Isaiah said. He said, and understand that I'm he before me. Before me, there was no God form. The Hindus will say, we are the oldest religion. That's what they say. All other religions fall under us, but we are on top here. We're the oldest religion. Not according to the Bible. Not according to the writing of Isaiah, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, before me, there was no God form. Neither shall there be any after me. Neither shall there be any after me. He said in verse number 11, he said, I, even I, am the Lord. And beside me, look at that. Beside me, there is, underline it, no Savior. So many came. They even came to Diana. Jim Jones came right to Diana. Remember I told you, I was working in Diana when that happened. Pastor Julian. I was 22 years when that thing happened in Guyana. 22 years. I never knew Jim Jones was in Guyana. What he claimed. He is the new savior. The Bible needed a living savior, the man said. So he has become the living savior. Take almost 1,000 Americans in the jungle. In the jungle of Guyana. And what happened? All lost their lives. A few years ago, two, one, one from... One, one, um, a guy came from Australia and a lady from Georgia in the USA came to our church, Calvary Baptist Church. I was excited during the break. I said, let me go meet them. He said, oh, I'm from Australia and, and you're from Georgia? What brings you two together? Oh, we're, we are missionaries. I said, praise God. I thought you were missionaries for Jesus Christ. I said, well, then I, I you know, I said, well, who are your missionaries too? He said, oh. We, we, we are with a new savior. I said, we have a new savior? I never heard about this. Yes, his name is, I, I even have an article that they give me. I still have that article. His name is Benjamin Kusuwain. He's from the Netherlands. Yeah. That's what they said. He is the new savior. They say he already did two miracles. I say he did two. And we are here to tell the people of Calvary Baptist Church about Benjamin Kusuwain. I said, well, let me tell you something. You sit and listen. 
And afterwards, we'll talk about your new Savior. Because I didn't want him to go away. They sit and listen and they heard about the true Savior, the living Savior, that is Jesus Christ. They left in a hurry after that. To this day, I've never seen him back. They're all over the world. All over the world. A new Savior here, a new Savior here, a new Savior here. But praise God for Isaiah. Isaiah said, I, even I am the Lord God said, and beside me there is no, there is no Savior. I have declared and have saved and I have shown when there was no strange God among you. Therefore, you are my witnesses. Look at that, said the Lord, that I am thy God. Here we are. Here we are. He said, here, my Lord, send me. You are my witnesses, he said. In Isaiah 43, verse 10. Verse 12, you are my witnesses. And Isaiah 44 and verse number 8. You're my witness. That's what Jesus said. He, Jesus said that. He said, he said in Acts chapter number one, how many times pastor has preached it and teach it here. He said, you shall be witnesses unto me. That's what God wants for you and I. It has nothing to do with the one that is standing here. It has to do with each one of us. If you expect pastor tuning to back this pew out, you got to be kidding me. Something's wrong with you. That is never taught in the Bible. A shepherd is the one who is here. The sheep multiply. It is the sheep that multiply. God is expecting you to get involved in this ministry. And that you don't come discouraged on, on Sunday morning. You know, I, have, I heard that so many times, Pierre. Oh man, I don't know what's happening to our church. You know, our church is not growing. Well, do something about it. Be a witness. Huh? Why we got to have this negative attitude? Be a witness. If you are a witness, I'm a witness, and she's a witness, and she's a witness, and that one is that one is a witness, then we can do something about it. Rather than we yap, yap, yap. God is calling upon us to be that witness. Us. To get your children, your grandchildren, your neighbors, if you could buy them the, the most expensive cell phone, then bring them to church. I think you could tell them, yeah, no, no. This is the deal. We have a deal, right? You come to church. When you come to church, we'll see what I can do for you. Get them in the church under the preaching of the man of God as he ministers the word. Be a witness. To... This thing is like, oh, Muhammad, you're a missionary. That's it. I'm going to support a missionary. So I go in my pocket, I give him a $20. Hey, Muhammad, take this. I know you're leaving. You're a missionary. And you feel that you have done your duty. That's it. I so we, our church support missionaries. So we don't have to. That's not, that's not it. That's not it, beloved. Please don't get it twisted. God is calling upon you to do your part. And to me to do my part. And to us together to do our part. As witnesses, that is what Isaiah is saying to you and I. Jesus said these simple words. He said, and you shall be witnesses unto me you shall be witnesses unto me he said begin where you are jerusalem judea samaria and then you see we got this idea is that witness here but not witness here that's that's not what the bible said the bible said begin here that's why i, I love to come to this church when steve tell me you know you know, Muhammad, we went to this neighborhood. I tried to get the children. And I love to see him when he brings those children on Sunday. The neighborhood. Get back to what Jesus said. Don't get it twisted. And, and we say, don't put the horse before the cart. You have to put the cart first and then go get a horse. Because if you get a horse first, they teach us when we were growing up. My grandfather had horse and cart. If you put a horse, when you come back, the horse will be gone. And you come back with a cart. So do what the Bible said. He said, begin where you are in Jerusalem. Begin in Judea, Samaria, and then you go to the uttermost part of the world. I was 29 years. Sorry, it was on the 29th of January, 1984. That was 38 years ago when I was witnessed to by an American missionary about Jesus Christ. You know, all I wanted to do when I found Christ on that same day was to be a preacher. 
and a witness. I never had calling 10 years after or 15 years after. I just want to start right there, like Isaiah did. Isaiah heard the message, Isaiah miraculously got saved, and Isaiah get involved. I love it. Love it. No time to waste. He got involved. You see? A witness 38 years ago. A witness for Jesus. Preach the gospel. Simple. Simple. All I want to be is an ambassador for Christ. That is what God wants you and I to be. You and I to be. Look, Suriname. I often think how many opportunity is like a temptation, man. How many opportunity I get when I come here to stay, you know. Why you go back, stay, you know. I could get your George. I could be a pastor, I could be an assistant pastor. I could work to a church, I could do something here. Just, Mohammed, why are you going back? Get, stay, stay, stay. Boy, I'm telling you, don't think it's not tempting. Don't think it's not tempting. I stay in this country for a while, one time, thinking that I'm done with Soren. I was preaching here and there and preaching here and there. And when I get home back in that apartment in Brandon, I was not the same. I was not the same. I was as miserable as miserable could be. Finally, after a few months, I said to Shelly, I said, Shelly, it's not gonna work. She said, I know, I keep watching you. It's not gonna work, I know. I know it's not gonna work. We booked a flight and we went back. What are we going back to? What are we going back to? Last night, I am, uh, Shelly was talking to some of our people back home in Suriname. Like what you see happening here, and what I told about Suriname, Muslim, Hindus, Roman Catholic, Jehovah Mormons, are. our president is Hindu, he worships the elephant god. Our vice president is, is, is witchcraft, he's a voodoo worshiper, and so forth. So that's what we go back to. We go back to a country that is shattered, the gas prices going up through the roof, food, crime, you name it, stealing, all that happening here in some city is happening worse in, in our, in our um, city. Stay here in the United States. Be very wonderful because we have two daughters here. You know, Shelly and I have not one single family member. All we have is a church. But blood family member in Suriname, she don't have one, I don't have one. Our children are here, and guess what? Our grandchildren are here. One is going to be just turned 18. The other one is going to graduate. We may lose the graduation. We may not be for high school graduation, definitely. And we may not be for college graduation. Price that we pay. We don't see them growing up and play ball and all of that. A price that we pay. But whenever we have an opportunity, I let them know and show them how much we love them. I let them know about their grandfather and their grandmother and so forth. And our son-in-law. We love them and we want to be them. But let me share a story. Shelly was asked to speak to the ladies group, and you know, she said, they'd call me Pastor Wife. They still call her Pastor Wife. They don't, they don't even know. If you go to Calvary, maybe 95% of that church may not know her name. They say, oh, she's Pastor Wife. Because our people are people from different parts of the world. She's, she's just a Pastor Wife that show them a love and witness to them about Christ with Christ's love. That's all we try to do. I want to give you one, one example. They come from different countries, so I try to get jobs for them. We go to these stores and wherever we can go and try to get jobs for them and try to give them some food, some clothing, whatever we can. Our church, we have them staying there at the church. Like our pastor children, we have people stay here. I have them staying in sunny school, makeshift shower, you name it, we have done that. I take zinc plat and, and create a shower when there was no shower just for them to be safe and, and have a place to stay. But I want to give you one example. A guy um, who was in, never lived Haiti in his life, and um, was, came to Suriname, Deacons is his name. Deacons is 34 years old, and he's, he's my daughter age, my second daughter age. Deacons came to Suriname, we get a job for him, and he always late, so I, I gave him a watch, I took my watch, I said he can take his watch because the boss keep complaining that you're always late. And he looked at me kind of funny when I gave him the watch. First time in his life, 
he hold a watch in his hand. First time in his life, he's gonna put the watch on his wrist. And guess what? He don't know to read the time. He don't know anything about reading the time on his watch. He's 34 years old. I teach him to read the time on his watch. And then I took him home and I said, Deacon, let me make you a sandwich. So I put two bread in a toaster and I toasted. He jumped when they brought pop up like that. Deacon had never seen a toaster in his entire life. It was a miracle to him that you could put two pieces of bread and the bread would pop up and the bread went in white and the bread came out brown. And now I explained to him it's a toaster, Deacons. 34 years, never, never hold a toaster, right? And I watch him when he comes, he wears a slipper and half of his feet is out of the slipper. I said, Deacons, you don't have a shoe that's all you, you have say yes because he couldn't find something to fit him his size is 13 and a half 14 and Suriname people feet are very small they're eight eight and a half if you wear nine in Suriname people think you're weird here comes deacons from Haiti and he's wearing 13 and a half 14 we can't find those things I went numerous store especially we have Chinese margin the Chinese feet are very small you know this Chinese don't wear eight. I think farther they go is six and a half, seven. Most Chinese, but we couldn't find pastor a shoe for deacon. We can in the entire sermon we can't find thirteen and a half and fourteen. So Shelly was or our daughter and and my daughter was telling the people that owned the store, and this lady went back and searched and searched and searched, and she found two pair of shoes. That is 14. So Shell and I are excited. We are very excited to go back home. You know why? Now we have two pair of shoes in our luggage to take back to Deacons. For you, you may, what is two pair of shoes? But I wish if you could come and see the expression of his face and the joy that will bring to him. So my friends, it's all about being a witness for Christ. Share some love, be a witness. Don't let the economy and the political situation break you up and break you down. Our God is still on throne. Be a witness, show some love. Thank you, Pastor Shuley. Thank you, church. Pray for us as we prepare to leave. And the Lord willing, we do not know if we ever will be back. But if not, you be a witness here. Shell and I will be a witness there. And we are witnesses for Christ. We are ambassadors for him. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you very much. We thank God for that message. Here am I. Send me. The Bible says we're laborers together with God. We're workers together with him. And right here was, here am I, send me. He shall be witnesses in both in Jerusalem where you are, where you live, where you work, where your circle of influence might be. Jerusalem, then move into Judea, Samaria, the uttermost part of the world. It's a progression, a progressive thing as you grow and mature. And let God use you for his glory. We thank God for that message. And those who are watching on video today, we want to share with them and someone who might be here. You say, I'm not sure of my salvation. I'm not sure if I died today, I'd go to heaven. There's a doubt. Why not settle it right now today? If there's a question, I'm not sure I'm saved. You want to pray this prayer that we're going to ask these people here watching on video. Do the same. Just say, oh God, I know that I'm a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned. That includes me. I do not want to die and go to hell. I want to be saved and go to heaven. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he shed his blood on Calvary. 
And they put him in the tomb. On the third day, he rose again, conquering death, hell, and the grave. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me today. I'm not trusting religion. I'm not trusting water baptism. I'm trusting a person, and that person is Jesus Christ. I believe you died for me. He rose again the third day. Come into my heart and save me today. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. Our Father, it's our prayer that you'll help us to go out and be the witnesses you'd have us to be, the laborers, workers you'd have us to be, the ambassadors you'd have us to be, and Father, these who have asked Christ to be their Savior, may they find a good Bible-believing church, may they get in the Word of God, begin to grow and develop. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.